um, and welcome to English Literature A-Level. My name is Chantal Iatelli and I am one of the teachers on this course. So I thought I would just start off by talking about which texts we look at, because that's probably the thing that you all want to know about. Um, so you start off in your first year by looking at some, um, some drama, so that's Death of a Salesman, so that's always a, a, a firm favourite amongst the first years. Um, you study the poetry of Keats, uh, we look at Othello by William Shakespeare, um, staying on that dramatic um, line. Um, in your second year, we do coursework, which is based on theory. So that's something that you'll be coming to for the first time when you do A-level. Uh, so you'll be looking at theories like feminism, uh, post-colonialism, uh, Marxism, eco-criticism, and other ideas around what's known as the canon. You can Google that if you don't know what that is. Um, when you come into the second year, we'll be looking at um, a really great novel called The Kite Runner, which is set in Afghanistan. Um, we'll be looking at The Handmaid's which is something that you might have seen around. Maybe you've seen the TV programme, there's a really good series on it. Um, that's about uh, a future dystopia set in um, North America. Um, we'll be looking at some poetry by William Blake, uh, that's called The Songs of Innocence and Experience. Um, and you'll be looking at some unseen um, texts which are uh, under the banner of the literature of political and social protest. So we have quite a broad um, sort of range of texts that you're doing. Um, you get to choose some of your texts when you're doing your coursework. So we'll be teaching you the poetry of Grace Nichols, um, who lives fairly uh, local to him actually in Lewis um, but you get to choose whichever novel that you want to um, so if you've got some ideas already it's good to start thinking about that in your first year so a question that you're probably asking yourself is why study English literature because it's not one of those subjects that readily springs to mind when you think of specific jobs I mean maybe things like journalism but apart from that it's a, it's a bit more kind of um, it's a bit more sort of indirect when we're thinking about what it leads to. But English literature is a brilliant subject um, to take. It's what's known as a facilitating subject. And facilitating subjects are subjects that um, really good universities, Russell Group universities, really like you to have. And the reason it's a facilitating subject is because it's really, really skills based. So it's not just about learning a load of facts and then applying them in an exam at the end of two years. Over the two years, you'll be really, really learning how to be critical about texts. And when you can learn how to be critical about texts and character and setting, that really makes you good at being critical about everything in the outside world. You know, you'll be able to see through, um, you know, the facts and the opinions of, of, of newspapers and, and other um, forms of media for the rest of your life once you have um, an English A-level. Um, it's a really, really good subject if you wanted to be a lawyer in the future. I know that's quite a popular degree that students like to take these days. Um, and the reason it's so good for law degrees um, is because it really helps you to structure debate and argument so if you're you know if you write an A grade essay you'll have a brilliant sense of argument running all the way through that piece of writing and it's also very good at teaching you how to structure your writing uh, which is important in all sorts of subjects across the piece. So um, I taught a student last year who did English Lit who's now studying law at Cambridge. Um, that's a massively popular and very competitive course. Law is competitive anyway. Um, if you want to be a barrister, really, really competitive uh, to get into. But if you want to read that particular subject at Cambridge, um, you know, fearsomely difficult to get onto. So um, doing that um, A-level in English Lit really, really gave him the skills that he needed to both um, pass his LNAT, which is uh, um, an exam that you have to do to, to get onto all sorts of really good law degrees, um, and also to excel in his fearsomely difficult Cambridge interview. And uh, I don't know if you've heard the rumours, but you get asked all, all sorts of sort of probing questions that you're probably not, well, hopefully you would be prepared for them, but English literature, um, the kind of debate that we have in our classes, um, it really, really sort of prepares you for those kinds of interviews. 
It is a popular course. We've got about 25 um, in our class. It sort of ranges between 20 to 25. Um, I per I'm teaching year two literature this year. I've got 25 in my class. I personally really like having um, bigger classes because it's much easier and much more fun having those debates and discussions when you've got more students. In Lit, we don't have like specific trips that we do every year because um, things change because of the nature of our course. So for example, we took our students to the Tate Gallery last year to see a brilliant William Blake exhibition because William Blake, as well as being a poet, was also an artist um, and he, you know, his art often accompanied his poetry. So that was a great um, opportunity to take some students up to see that. But you know that was a, a temporary um, exhibition. So and and it's the same with um, you know sort of theatre, which we like to take our students to. If there's a really great production of um, Othello, or even a middling one, actually, we'll do. Uh, we'll we'll take you up um, to see that. Death of a Salesman was on recently. So it really does depend what we can get our mitts on and what we can book and, and take you to. But we're really really keen on trips because, especially with drama you read it in class and you'll probably end up watching um, a video of it but it's much better to go and see it on stage because that's what, what it was designed for. You should come here because everybody in the English department and all the other departments is totally uh, passionate about teaching English. Um, the reason I teach in a college um, and I don't teach in a school is because I specifically like teaching A-level. I like teaching older students, I like teaching um, the higher skills that are needed in A-level. Um, it means that I can put all of my energies into researching, into um, you know, reading the texts that are, that are around A-level English rather than having to think about teaching other years as well. So you'll get subject experts here but also level experts. Um, I think that's really, really important and that's why college wins out. So thank you very much for listening and watching this. Um, I hope I was able to answer some of your questions. I'm sure you've got loads more questions. So um, if you do, please feel free to contact the college who will ask me to um, get in contact with you. Thank you, bye.